The Trump Organization is the umbrella body under which all businesses, brands and ventures that are owned, managed or run by Donald Trump and his family fall. Donald Trump has often been accused of inflating the success of the organization, particularly in the way he describes it. And this is fueled by the widespread belief that he is so egocentric. But at the same time, a closer look at the man and his career gives one the impression that those who don't like him, especially for political reasons, may be leaning towards ignoring any business achievement he's made over the years. Indeed, it's very hard in the prevailing political storm to tell the true story of Donald Trump and, by extension, the Trump Organization. I would say the truth about Donald Trump's success lies between what he says and what his ardent critics say about it. He has had both successes and failures as a businessman. Indeed, holding the view that he is a total failure is unrealistic as much as believing he is a genius entrepreneur of the rare kind. But before we explore in detail the beginning of the Trump Organization and how it's reached where it is today, I have a request to make. Take a moment to subscribe to our channel. You don't want to miss any of the videos we publish every week about major brands in the US and around the world. Also, it gives us more reason to keep doing what we're doing. If you've already subscribed, we really appreciate it. Now, back to the Trump Organization. The Trump Organization came into the spotlight and focus of millions of people in the US and around the world when Donald Trump was elected the 45th President of the United States in 2016. In particular, there were concerns that if Donald Trump continued to be actively involved with the business, it would lead to conflict of interest instances. Therefore, to avoid any possible ethical violations, Donald Trump offered to step down as the president of the company before he was sworn into office. And he appointed his sons, Eric and Don Jr., to run it in his absence. This has, however, not stopped critics from questioning whether his position as the president isn't benefiting the Trump organization in terms of business opportunities and deals behind the scenes. And these questions are likely to be asked even after he's out of office. But while the Trump Organization was brought to the public discourse by the election of Trump, it's been in the list of the well-known American corporate brands for decades. In particular, Donald Trump has been a public figure since the 1970s as some sort of a male socialite. His appearance on major TVs in various capacities has also made his image stick with millions of Americans. Beginning in 2003, he was the executive producer and host of the reality show Apprentice, which aired on NBC. In the programme, contestants competed to get a management job at the Trump Organization. It's on the programme that he became synonymous with the line, You're fired. He used it to dismiss contestants that failed to impress him in their quest to join his organisation. He also co-hosted another reality show known as The Celebrity Apprentice, where celebrities won money for charities of their choice. Both Apprentice and The Celebrity Apprentice were business ventures under the Trump Organisation. Also, as a flagship of the Trump Organization, he organized the Miss Universe pageants between 1996 and 2015 on CBS and NBC. That included Miss USA and Miss Teen USA. But whatever's been portrayed in showbiz is the tip of the iceberg of the Trump brand. In fact, the Trump Organization is more massive than what many people can imagine. This is a gigantic business entity. Given that the organization is a private business entity, the financial numbers are hard to come by. However, it's been estimated that the organization is worth billions of dollars. But what exactly has been the role of Donald Trump in the organization? Contrary to what many think, Donald Trump is not the founder of the Trump brand. But he has done a lot to expand it across industries and around the world. Before we explore the input of Donald Trump to the Trump brand, let's first look at its origins. The life of the Trump brand began in the early 1900s when a German immigrant by the name Frederick Trump moved to New York. He married a fellow immigrant from Germany by the name Elizabeth Christ, who, as we'll see, played a significant role in the rise of the Trump organization. After working in the hotel industry, Frederick got into the real estate business and Elizabeth stayed at home to take care of their kids. They had three kids together, Elizabeth, Fred and John. The couple was doing well for themselves, but that was short-lived. Frederick died in 1918. He was one of the tens of millions of people around the world who died from the influenza pandemic of 1918. After the death of Frederick Trump, it dawned on Elizabeth that she had to get involved in the businesses he left behind if her kids were to live a good life. 
She took over his business and began constructing houses on plots he left behind, mostly in the Queens area of New York, and sold some of them and rented out others. She made a lot of money from sales as well as the rent. It's Elizabeth who put the company on the path to success, and indeed, her husband did not leave behind a formal entity. It was Elizabeth who formally registered an entity through which the family would engage in business. Fred, who is the father of Donald Trump, joined his mother in the business when he was barely out of his teens. Together, they formed and registered the E. Trump & Son Company in 1927. Even though they attempted to get into other businesses, such as the restaurant business, real estate remained their primary or core business. Donald Trump was born in 1946 to Fred Trump and his wife Mary Ann, who was an immigrant from Scotland. Interestingly, Trump's family seems like it's hugely an immigrant family. In total, Fred and Mary Ann had three sons and two daughters. Donald was their second youngest. But as he grew up, Donald showed more interest in his father's and grandmother's business more than his siblings. He began working in the family business while he was still in college. He graduated from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania in 1968 with a Bachelor of Science in Economics. About two years later, Donald Trump was made the president of the company, the position his father had held. Meanwhile, Fred, his father, remained the chairman of the board, a position he held until his death in 1999. There's one issue in regard to the relationship between Donald Trump and his father that has remained unclear. Donald has always said that his father gave him a loan of $1 million, which he's managed to grow to billions. But other reports have indicated that in the 1970s, his father gave him loans exceeding $14 million. Up until Donald took over the leadership of the business, it was referred to as Elizabeth and Son. One of the first changes Donald Trump made was to start referring to the business as the Trump Organization. Now let's look at the successes and failures the Trump Organization has experienced under the leadership of Donald Trump. We begin with successes. One of the successes that the Trump Organization has achieved under Donald Trump is brand visibility. There's no question that the decisions, actions and strategies by Donald Trump have made the brand more recognizable not only in the US but also around the world. Donald Trump seems to have not only recognized the power of the mass media but also how to leverage it as a business. Donald Trump has always been a guest at popular TV programs such as The Oprah Winfrey Show, The Roseanne Barr Show, The Howard Stern Show and others. Donald Trump has also appeared in several WWE shows and also as a cameo character in tens of films. Also, the company has brought into its management some of the most iconic properties in the US. It's during Donald Trump's leadership that the organization managed to own or manage high-value buildings like the Empire State Building. And it seems the Trump Organization is excellent with property management because there are many entities and property owners who've entrusted the Trump Organization with their high-end real estate. Donald Trump has also expanded the business to other countries. Before Donald Trump took over, its operations were almost entirely limited to the US. Now the company owns property in North America, Europe, Middle East, India and South America. In total, there are over 500 businesses that operate under the Trump Organization umbrella. Almost half of them use the name Trump in their branding. All of them are owned by Donald Trump, his siblings or his children. Real estate remains the main business that the Trump Organization is involved in. They own hotels, golf resorts, casinos, apartments and high-value homes. The Trump Organization also leases the name Trump to businesses around the world that need it for marketing and branding purposes. But yes, the Trump Organization has also experienced failures and lousy business strategies. And one way that that's been evidenced is through the number of times the company has filed for bankruptcy. Between 1991 and 2009, at least six businesses under the Trump Organization umbrella, mostly hotels, resorts and casinos, have filed for bankruptcy. Every time that's been done under business-friendly bankruptcy laws, which allowed some entities under the Trump Organization to operate as they negotiated with creditors and other stakeholders. It seems like filing for bankruptcy is one of the strategies that Donald Trump has come to view as not only necessary, but also worth exploiting. In one interview with Newsweek, he's been quoted saying, I do play with the bankruptcy laws. They're very good for me. 
but it seems this strategy has backfired on his business. The source of most of the bankruptcies are loans worth close to $4 billion extended to entities under the Trump Organization in the 1980s. Most banks have refused to do business with entities under the Trump Organization because of the risk of transactions ending up in bankruptcies. Another business failure is the Trump Shuttle, an airline founded in 1988. The company bought 21 planes at $380 million from Eastern Airlines, which was going out of business. Despite the cost of setting up the airline being financed through a loan facility by over 20 banks, it never realized any profits. It was sold to the US Air Group in 1992. As you can see, the Trump Organization has both the good and the bad sides. How the Trump presidency changes it is not yet clear. We'll find out over time. Thanks for staying with me up to this point. I really appreciate it. I remind you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet done so. And also, don't forget to like, share and comment. I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye-bye.